Hi y'all, my name is Melody and thanks for stopping by. And today I'm going to be doing a My History Booktube. Um, as I like to explain things, uh, books uh, through their historical values and purposes um, and get you to read with me or excited about the historical aspects and about learning about history. In this one, I'm going to go over a book that I read. It is an autobiography. It is a modern historical autobiography, as it is by um, Michael Fuller, Fuller, who was Britain's first ever black chief constable um, in the police here. Um, he uh, was a constable in the South, in England and in London. He worked for the Metropolitan Police and um, he had an illustrious career spanning decades, which is why this book is so important because it, it chronicles um, his life as well as historic events that occurred during that period. And the book is called A Search for Belonging and it was published in 2020. Um, the, it did have a former title of Kill the Black One First. Now, Michael Fuller was actually was born in England in 1959 to two Jamaican immigrant parents who were separated. It was deemed uh, that his mother could not take care of him, so that he went into the custody of the state where he was housed in a, a care home for children. Um, but it was a child care home. So it was, they had made a change or was trying to make care homes less like dormitories and places of, um, that we see in movies and things like that where the babies and the children are all in like little cages and whatnot um, from orphanage days. So it was less like that, more like a family unit that they were trying to create. So you lived in this um, nice house um, that backed onto woods and had places for him to ride his bike freely and play with the other children and things like that. Now, um, in the in, while he was custody of the state, um, he ha was at this care home in Surrey and he was looked after by a woman named Margaret and she acted as his a surrogate mother because she provided him um, love, hope and freedom, which is something he really didn't feel when his mother came to visit him because he felt that she was very standoffish with him um, and that she didn't um, exude love and warmth to him as a mother should do. Um, Margaret actually taught him, one of her main tenets that she taught him, excuse me, was that he needed to stop, think about the what's going on um, and interactions before actually acting, acting upon them. And it, this is actually something that comes back regularly as a theme throughout this book, is that this idea that he needs to stop and think before he puts into place any actions to try to solve a problem or try to combat an issue. Um, during his childhood, um, he actually wasn't judged as a black child or as a black man until he was about nine years old, excuse me, um, when in the local paper, they described him as, excuse me for saying this, a colored boy. Um, in a school production, whereas they didn't point out the colors of any of the other children, but because he was black, they pointed out his color in the newspaper, which is not very good these days, but I don't know if that's the way they saw things or that's the way they were dealt with things in, in Britain in the 1960s, um, as it's very different from what I grew up with. But then again, I was born in the 80s. So, um, and like I said, this is a good look back on modern history as well for that. Um, there is a point in the book where there's a burglar who breaks into his home and into the home and he sees his face coming through the window and that kind of haunts his dreams and things like that and becomes like a sort of, sorry, a sort of uh, like, nightmarish type of incident to him. However, for the most part, the, the this house is a safe place for him. Um, so while 
with Mar Margaret, he actually devours police TV programs and decides that he wants to join the police as he believes in justice and, and that people should um, have consequences to their actions. Um, and so, his, like I said, his mother occasionally visits, but she's very standoffish, but he visits his fa father's home and um, the Caribbean family there, and they constantly, if he mentions he wants to be police, they constantly tell him why um, he can't join the police, the police can't be trusted, um, that they're against uh, black people and that sort of thing. Um, in the, there, they move from the big country home to a house in a town, and he experiences further instances of racism within the school, including from his teachers, um, because there are national front flyers um, handed out at school, which talk of sending immigrants home um, and uh, joining the national front to take back our country. It's kind of like that sort of... Um, I would say BMP Brexit mentality that goes on here at the moment. The immigrants are going to take our jobs, sort of thing. And he finds out that it's one of his teachers that does it, which is really shocking. I don't know if it's like, like I said, I don't know how shocking it was in the day, but it is quite shocking that, that somebody that he, that he is learning from and trying to respect is being this racist um, to uh, everyone. Well, to black people while having a black student that they're trying to teach and that's just something that boggles the mind because to be a teacher you need to be open you need to be inclusive you need to like not treat anybody less than sort of thing and that's completely what i think that goes against the value of teaching is to be like that um so so during this time he begins to use running as an escape where he can think about think about the situations like Margaret taught him and how how to deal with them um, and and also um, during this time as well as I say he's a very good student so he's doing really good in his exams and he gets into the police uh, academy um, and um, however people are saying that he's smart for a black person. So it's that sort of like casual racism going on there. Like they didn't think he could be good at running and be smart at the same time. Um, it was just it, like the, it, it's just a blatant bit of racism right there. Um, he gets into the police kind of, at academy at 1975 at the age of 16 where he's the only black man to graduate um now during that time as well i think it was right before the exams margaret actually passes away of cancer and they get new, new house parents in to take care of the children and he's very upset but he actually does this for margaret because he's he's trying to strive and she's like the one he wants to do well for as well because he she was that mother figure to him um, that during his time at the police academy, there is both blatant and subver subversive racism. Um, and you find throughout the book that there's a lot of microaggressions as well as insinuations that he was rising in his career due to the affirmative action and not the work that he's actually put in. Um, Fuller is actually, is I say actually like this is like Fuller is an extremely smart and studious man and he gains qualifications to further his career and his knowledge at the same time as working which is something that I find highly highly like intelligent um so he is a very bright man and he is trying to prove everybody wrong at every turn which is really good was it really good but it's like it's it just shows that like stereotypes are are stupid basically that's what i'm trying to say there um because what he's actually doing with trying to further his career what you find out that he is doing is that he wants to have enough um qualifications and uh learning and background knowledge that 
he would to never give people an excuse that he achieved what he did because of his color and because of things like affirmative action or or whatnot. Um, and what he, what he's doing, what Fuller does while he was in the police is he's like he wants to change the system from within. Um, a system which is inherently racist with like stop and search and things like that um, and where they see black people as others and the Met um, is actually hemorrhaging, um, hemorrhaging police officers of color so they can't keep police officers color and that's because that is mostly probably because of the fact that um, at points, he he's sitting with his colleagues. His colleagues are all white, and he's the only black person there. And they're making all these racist jokes, and they're like, "But not you," sort of thing. It's like this is yeah, everybody, but not you. You're the only good one, that sort of thing. Which is is probably um, well, it's not probably. It's generally the cause of why people wouldn't want to stay in a hostile environment such as this um, to work in, because of the fact is that they're hearing so much things, uh, so much things like that. And I believe uh, there's also national front posters even in the police ha hall as well, which is like beyond shocking because what you generally want your police to be is apolitical. So, um, well, not apolitical, but like everyone gets a straight, uh, the same treatment. And there's instances where that they don't get the same treatment and he's not even given the same treatment. Even out of his, um, out of his uniform, he's even uh, given a horrible treatment by officers um, who pull him over one day when he's driving his nice car because he can afford a nice car because he's got the job, because he's got the qualifications, because he did all the work. And he's got pulled over because apparently a black man can't drive a car like that because it's too nice or it's brand new or whatever. Um, it's it's just a lot of shocking internal racism that's going on here. Um, what you can actually see. And I mean, we know the fact that there is racism and there is systematic racism. But when you actually read it um, in a modern history context, in a book such as an autobiography of this, it becomes... It, it doesn't just become more real. It becomes like that is an ex there is so much um, horrible stuff that has actually happened um, in this in this uh, group of people who are supposed to be protecting everyone. How can you protect people if you don't even like them? That's it's it's horrible. And I can you can kind of like make. A lot of allusions to what happens in his book to what's actually going on now um, especially in the United States um, in regards to um, the Black Lives Matter movement and um, the way uh, police officers treat people of color and different races and stuff like that and then there's also um, of course in not too long ago here um, in Scotland um, where a black man was uh, died in police custody and nobody has been held accountable for that death. Um, Sheku Bayou if you want to look that up um, and there hasn't been justice for his family either so there's still I mean like people point at Britain to be like oh this is great and and they're better with that but you still see pockets of racism and maybe it was more prevalent in that period, but there's probably still like where there needs to be more and you need to see more people of different races policing and then people being um, helpful and it not just being, oh, there's the one nice police officer or there's that one guy who, who gets it. It needs to be everyone. Anyway. So not just that. So there's two um, highly important British uh, British history moments um, in terms of Black British history, um, which you come across in. Um, Fuller is involved in the 1981 Brixton riots as a um, riot police officer. Um, this is where you actually will see it. Will you read about? Um, them sitting in a bus and the blatant racism going on with the comments um, 
and the people there. But then when he gets out um, and he's standing in the police line and he's the only black face there, that's where you get the previous name of the book, uh, which is which was Kill the Black One First, is because that's what he heard someone say um, in the, uh, Car the Caribbean community during the riots. Um, um, and he felt, and it's, it was that that made him felt like he didn't actually belong anywhere. So he didn't belong in the police because they were inherently racist and he didn't belong to, um, the Caribbean community because he was in the police. So where did he actually belong sort of thing? So he's looking for, that's where it's a search for belonging. Cause he's trying to find where he belongs, which is so in, important. There is also, um, he speaks about, um, the murder of Stephen Lawrence. Um, so the, uh, as well, uh, now the Brixton riots were caused by um, just te tensions between the Caribbean um, and black community um, in Brixton and, and the police and the government. Um, and the murder of Stephen Lawrence is, was a high, it's a highly publicized murder um, because he was, um, killed in a racially motivated attack while waiting for a bus um, in London in 1993. Um, and it was dismissed as um, as uh, black on black violence, I think he was. Um, so, so they didn't actually, um, it was completely dismissed as a racial and racially incited um, killing. Um, and it, it, to be honest, um, his, the pet, to the pepper, per, perpetrators were not even convicted until 2012. If you want to go and look more about that, that is like a shocking state of affairs. Um, Fuller was actually involved in, um, going back over the case and learning about, um, the details of, um, what happened and how they can prevent things like that happening again. Um, he is also uh, quite uh, influential in creating a um, black police officers, I think black and Asian police officers, um, like um, not club, but like a group um, within um, the police uh, for them to be able to let out their grievances and tell um, people um, how they're feeling and try to make uh, the police better for black and Asian people um, and the police officers or people of color. Um, also, he did a lot of things in, re in reduction of crime and um, reducing the crime in the areas that were a high crime and he was very successful in everything that, in everything that he did. So the book itself is a modern history. It's, it is about the experiences specific to Fuller as a black man growing up in Karen through the police system of the late 1970s through to the 2000s and the racism that he experienced both overt and covert. But it also documents how he struggles with his identity as a black man and the son of Jamaican immigrants. Um, Fuller does successfully work within the Met to make changes to the system and especially in community policing because that's what actually started the problem with the Brixton riots um, was the, the way that they were policing the communities and not being integrated in the communities and not like seeing people and just making other making people into others. Um, that's why I find that this book is a very successful book, not only as a autobiography, but also as a history lesson that you learn quite a lot. He does actually, at the end of the book, he goes back um, and he does some research about the time he's in care and stuff like that. And he finds out more about that. I would say this is a really good uh, book to read and it is really good about the experiences of black men within the British police force and to get that first count and um, primary source knowledge um, of that is very is um, very important uh, so that we can learn what happened then and try to change the way that things go forward. 
and I think that's the message with everything that we have. Um, if I, I did rate this on Goodreads, and I did rate it a five because I, I enjoyed the book. Very, I enjoyed hearing about his struggles and how he overcame the struggles, um, and I think that that's a lot that we can see that somebody has overcome that struggle but it's like he carried this mantra of his of the mother uh, well of margaret throughout his entire life he carried he carried her words with him and that's what kind of seems like it kind of pushed him forward and pushed him to achieve which which makes it even better because he tried there's a point at the beginning where he he hides where he's been so he doesn't tell people he's from a care home he never says that he's grown up a care because there's a stigma attached to that and it's trying to overcome these stigmas and that's what the that's what um i believe the message of the book is is like there is ways to overcome stigmas and to overcome like what may be deemed as issues while also telling us about how the police was ran and held back in those time periods. Um, and I hope that everything is moving forward and not moving backwards in regards to this um, and that we can learn from what um, from people such as Fuller and their experiences and how to not repeat the past. Um, I hope that made sense. Um, so if you like this bit of history, I would definitely recommend going out and reading this book. It is a very good book. Um, if you like um, the history, you like me, and you like this channel, please do hit subscribe, give the thumbs up, share with a friend. Um, I'm just going to end it on there and say that stay safe, stay positive. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.